Hey everybody, what's going on? Rob Sestrino back here. We've got a, a great one here today. Talking Traders back here with Puya Zambakili. Puya, how are you? Doing fabulous as always, Rob. Excited to answer some questions and I'm very pumped for the guests we have today. You have no idea. Very excited to talk to some brand new parents, taking some time away to talk some traders here with us. Welcome in. Wes and Amanda Bergman. Well, well, well. What is going on? What a, treat. what a treat to be joined by one of the legends of the challenge here to talk about everything. And of course, uh, grant a very belated birthday wish to Amanda. Thank you, Rob. Yes, this is a, this is a bucket list item for me. So uh, he crossed off birthday. Push present. Push present. Yes. All in one. yes. Uh, <laughs> and, and what a big week for you two, as uh, we are just days away from the Super Bowl. It's Ooh. true. Yeah. We're, uh, you know, the, we care so much that it's actually not even fun. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I don't even talk trash anymore. We don't even hype anything up. Um, I don't give my friends or anybody any bulletin board material. We are very excited for the game. Um, but uh, we don't underestimate anybody. You're yeah. talking to a Jets fan, though. So I mean, <laughs> like, oh, I would love a Super Bowl. <laughs> we would love, we would love to even appear in the playoffs. That would be, <laughs> that would be, that would be something. Uh, yeah. So okay, but I, I you two are, uh, you know, real deal. Uh, KC superstars. Or Wes was wearing the Kelsey jersey way back when, before it was cool. I would say, uh, when we did our exit press for uh, the challenge CBS. I'd like to think that rooting for Travis Kelsey has been cool for a long time. Um, it is now mainstream cool, which makes me actually want to uh, support. I'm moving into a, a new player as my main. Yeah. I mean, you two are basically Travis and Taylor coded, right? So funny story. I was actually <laughs> so. Travis Kelsey lives in my neighborhood. He moved in in November um, and as did Taylor. So they are my new neighbors and there's pop and we live inside of a gated community. And I was exiting the gated community in my brand new, beautiful truck recently. And yes. the paparazzi snapped me and they thought I was Travis Kelsey. <laughs> so they published a picture of me in my car and they said something along the lines of uh, Travis Kelsey doesn't love Taylor Swift as much as Taylor Swift loves Travis Kelsey. Um, and so I am apparently his doppelganger. It also okay. said a worse for the wear Travis Kelsey was spotted. So oh. yeah, yeah I left out that part. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They was they I was trying to leave that part out, but um, but thanks, Amanda. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well. What? We're so happy that you both are here to talk uh, some traders and get your sense on uh, because now, like basically between the 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 challenge uh, USA and the traders, like we we live in the same world now. It's true. Well, okay, so just it's to, like we to, all live in the same gated community. To, <laughs> to give a little bit of context here of why I've felt a part of your community for a while. My wife is a huge Survivor fan and has been since like middle school. Um, first season we watched it my whole family so uh and she's a big rob has a podcast fan gigantic in fact it's the only thing that we agree on to listen to while while we're in her car she's got horrible music taste and so it's either we will listen to rob or we will listen to nothing and those are are those are that's my only rule mm -hmm. so anytime i've been in the car with her since we've been married we've listened to rob has a podcast um, so we are very happy to be here um, yeah. in your presence. Well, this is so cool. Amanda, thank you for bringing us all together. Rob, you're the best of the best and you were a trailblazer. So we're just like so happy that we get to talk one of our new favorite shows together. You know, I'm not Boston, Rob, right? Uh, yes, but I would love Even a Boston Rob that. impression at some point. Hey. In <laughs> Wes, you better not see your traders, <laughs> man. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think that could use some work, but yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we'll work on it. We'll work on it. It wasn't prepared. <laughs> yes. Okay. Uh, would love to get your sense uh, so far, you two, from uh, what you've seen from Traders Season 2 so far. Are you enjoying it? 
Yeah. It's... We dressed like our two favorite um, traders characters. I'm oh. Obviously, Parvati. And yes. Chess is Fergus. Fergus. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Okay. We we love the commitment to the bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We're we everything that we do, we do, we lean in, we go big. Um. And so here love we that. are in costume. But it's been a great season so far. Yeah. We're really really enjoying it. Wes got caught up. Gosh, like a couple days ago. And I was gonna just wait until it was all over and then binge watch it. But because mm -hmm. of this, I binge watched the six episodes this weekend. Um, okay. So I'm officially caught so, up. Yeah. So it's fresh in your mind. Okay. So what? Any big takeaways from six episodes? I would say, okay, so we um, we binged the other seasons, including the international ones, right post-hospital. Wow. Um, that was our postpartum newborn show. So uh, at least we watched one and two of UK and Australia. Yeah, mm -hmm. or whatever, or one of each. Or, one of each. Or so. whatever, whatever was out. And um, I, by the way, we really like the international ones. So I'm just throwing that out there to anyone that's a big fan that has not seen the international ones. You know, I, I get it. I really, I would rather watch the American ones be kind of reality show alumni um, and see the celebrities and such. That's fun for us. But to watch how they've cast things like Australia, where they have people that were like, career wise made to play something like the traders mm -hmm. um takes it to another level and it's not like we would know australian reality stars anyway so i'd rather have you know the fbi's the the australian version of the fbi and there's this one guy that was cap held captive for like six months and saved himself and, all, and so it's like a perfect cast so i'd say shout out to the international ones um but it is also a trip to not only watch obviously a great show but then to watch people that i know on it I know Trishel and Bananas and sure. uh, CT incredibly well. Um, combined, I've done probably 17 seasons of reality television with the three of them, maybe more. Um, and they were it was it, it was well cast. I mean, those are you got to give those those two definitely a shot. And then Trishel was brilliant. Um, kind of a little bit of a throwback when when it says yeah. that she's from the challenge, I even though she left her mark on the challenge, it should say real world for her because she is an iconic real world cast member. Um, and yes, yeah, she might've done the challenge three, four times. She left her mark on one of the biggest shows of all time um, and on the real world. And I almost consider mm -hmm. her from that almost more so from the challenge. So it's a, it, we have a, we get a kick out of watching people we know. Um, but it is, it is fantastic. Now, uh, I have notes for some of the players. Um, I think that there is always places that we can improve. Um, who do you think of those three as playing? Well, I mean, Bananas is obviously out, but who do you think is playing the best game? of? Well, I know Bananas all too well, and I have warned him about about this exact problem on the challenge, and he cannot help himself. And I, I talked to him on the phone recently and he finally agreed with me because so he brings his guitar to all these new shows he can barely play he knows four songs at a d minus level capacity <laughs> um he has the same recycled jokes half of them are stolen from me that he just repeats ad nauseum <laughs> he's got like two bar tricks that he does every time he walks into a place with and so he knows how to be like the life of the party but that is not what you're supposed to be. You're supposed to use some of those skills to be likable and to befriend people, but not so much to where you're the center of attention everywhere. And that is one of the reasons why I believe he was kind of sent out so early. So I think that um, it was a bad move on Dan's part to get rid of him, but it was also a bad move on Banana's part to go through the same gimmick like if he had just shown up and been a little bit more low-key he probably would be a lot better off yeah definitely uh he, he certainly would have made himself uh, i think the subject of uh some of these banishments uh, amanda are you, now we know you're you have a survivor pedigree what about big brother We've actually never gotten into Big Brother. Uh, we watched a couple of seasons. I think the all I was familiar with Janelle just from the All Stars season, mm -hmm. um, although she, you know, wasn't on it the full season. You know, pretty pretty short lived in the game. But um, I was familiar with her. Um, Dan was brand new to me, so uh, I'm very and I've been listening to all the recaps yeah. and everything. So I am very curious to hear 
Puya and Rob, your thoughts on if there's anything he could have done differently other than just not being a traitor. <laughs> but uh... I, I would love to, as people who don't know Dan, you know, we're coming in with sort of like, okay, you know how these, uh, you know, people that have like uh, this like big resume come into the shows and then you think of so much. Uh, but if you don't know Dan, uh, what were your takeaways about watching Dan as a newcomer? Okay, so uh, I know enough to know that he is an infamous Big Brother player. So it's it, you already know just by getting the two sentence introduction of he's one Big Brother one and close to two times is what it sounded like twice yeah. according to Phaedra. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right, well, but either way, um, and then we and then now we know um, that he, no one's ever voted for. So there's a way to play that, right? There's Casey Clark's, there's Tyler Crispin's. They all play identical. They do nothing. They say nothing. They play no game. And that works with casuals. But with people like me, I know what you're doing. I see through that. And there's a lot more of me's in this game than there are casuals. And so when you're not giving me anything, I don't want to play with you. And if I'm not playing with you, I might as well get rid of you. But and so he did. He was now. I'm not saying to say play sloppy and say a bunch of names and basically do what Janelle did on kind of uh, recently. But you needed to have a target or two, even if it was just in private, um, to kind of give some uh, some meat for some other people to chew on. So he just went straight up. I'm going to do nothing, and that wouldn't necessarily make me think he was a traitor. It would make me think he's not trying to work with me at all. And so I might as well get rid of him. Um, Cause if he's not telling me anything, then I know, then he might be thinking of me. And so, you know, I'm kind of, um, I kind of hate the big brother style of doing nothing. I think it's boring. Um, I think it, uh, it it's in, incredibly bad television. And for people that are trying to play and play hard, it's no fun to play with either. Cause it's like, I can sit around and not talk game with you in between seasons. Um, I'm come here to play a game. I want to hear who are your alliances? Who are we working together? Who should we go after together? The fact that he did none of that with anyone, he couldn't even pull aside one person and throw out a smoke bomb of sorts, like nothing. Yeah. And the cast had warned him like three cycles earlier. So it's not like they came out of nowhere and were like, oh, we're mad you haven't said anything in six episodes. Around episode three, they were like, eh, this is kind of sketchy. You're in probation. And he still didn't have the courage to say or do anything until kind of the last second. Yeah. They were begging yeah. him. They were begging him, please. He's like, please give me like a, a rabbit hole to go through something. And he really didn't. And I love what you're saying, Wes. Uh, we also have Michelle last week who talked a little bit more about with the challenge. Y'all are a lot more willing to step from the front or be very vocal. And I think challenge. Housewives, these are the reality shows, very much appreciate the let's talk about it. And I think with the traders, if you're not contributing, I don't care whether you're a trader or faithful, that's bad for us. I don't yep. want you to just slide on through while I'm putting my name under the line of fire with some suspicions that might be wrong. You know, what's interesting about what you just said, a challenger stabbing in the front is incredibly true. So th some things about our game that's different than Big Brother and Survivor is that there's no jury mm -hmm. and we play many seasons together. And with that in mind, we don't backstab. So even though we might wrestle and fight and punch and bleed and jump out of helicopters, that gives us the reputation that the, we're the most aggressive. But the way we play is actually the most straightforward because we don't need a resume to win. In fact, trying to go out and get a resume will burn a bridge with someone for the next three or four seasons with you, which is an unnecessary problem. So we play very kind of upfront games um, and we do cutthroat things and we make hard decisions, but mm -hmm. we don't ever, we like the blind side, if you will, wasn't a word that we ever really used until Big Brother and Survivor infiltrated our game. And they are, they in, in, in very stupidly bring it to our game. And you wonder why some of them have such bad reputations and are creating so many enemies um, because they do that as if, as if there's some jury watching the gameplay and that's going to be the vote. It's like, um, no, that's not. So, so we play very different. I guess we play a lot more like housewives. <laughs> okay. And do you feel like that that challenge style is conducive to the traders? Given what we just watched with, um, uh, with Dan, I'd say yes. Um, but you know, like we've got two different, uh, pieces of data right now on two extremes. We've got CT who looks to be in a fairly good position. I mean, shoot, he even fell for one of the 
he was one of the um, people that was set up to get trapped. And even after he was one of the three got tra got trapped, Peter's like, oh, well, I still don't believe it's him. So he's doing something really right. Whereas bananas couldn't have done any worse. So it's kind of hard to, it's kind of hard to say. Um, I think uh, I, it's definitely hard to say, but, but the answer is yes. I think that there's a 10 plus really, really good challengers that would be phenomenal at this game in particular. Well, and Trishel, I, I heard you talk about this, Puya, but uh, Trishel was like the one who clocked the Phaedra, uh, you know, that Dan wouldn't have thrown her under the bus unless he, you know, if he's a trader, she has pretty high likelihood of being a trader too. So I'm interested to hear where you think that's going to go. That was like a big, uh, wow, she's playing hard moment for me. This is going to be a very fun season for future seasons because I feel like in with the UK season two and now here with US season two, these are all still shows in their infancy because we've not seen more than two. But I think the underlying thing that a lot of people are going to start noticing is traders will really be going after each other because they think if I feed you a trader, you're going to think I'm a number one detective. You're going to keep your eyes off of me for a little bit. Yeah. So. For me, the biggest thing with Dan, and he clarified that he was never going to turn on Parv, but it was like he had not built enough foundation to put some suspicion on Phaedra and then went for a Hail Mary on Phaedra when no one was looking that way at all. So he was never going to flip the votes there, which I think also has divided the fandom because some people think that he pettily just threw her out because she had no suspicion on the way out and he didn't care about what happened. He just wanted to like ruin her game. Whereas I think he just straight up wanted to have his cake and eat it too of let me keep Parv and let me throw Phaedra, which was never going to work. But yeah. to go back to your initial thing about Trishel, I think it's a fascinating thing because Trishel right now is in a group of four, five people that are seen as the most faithful to ever faithful. So all she needs to do now, if nothing, everything goes her way is keep these five, keep Phaedra, get to the end cut phaedra and then you're in a great spot and also obviously buddy up with phaedra so she doesn't murder you but i don't know i don't know if she's going to be able to share it or not i think what's going to be interesting is is this group of five going to get scrutiny next episode because i feel like they've rubbed the rest of the manor the wrong way so we'll see how that plays out and if i could add one more thing about trishel that I, I think she is so smart and i think she's uh much smarter than people like give her credit for i think that her reputation if, if people even like uh know that far back think uh, okay well you know trishel is you know from uh the, the real world in vegas and is a partier but uh, from knowing her a little bit uh, over the years, that I think she's like a, a really a super smart player, and I don't think you can like be a person who makes that kind of like great TV unless you ha are like acutely aware of how you're being perceived. So I think that she's somebody who is uh, probably uh, people is are sleeping on her in terms of her being a threat to uh, as a faithful. You know what? You one thing that I think that the producers are maybe missing a shot on as far as um, storytelling with Trishel that I've not heard anyone talk about. She's a professional poker player. Yeah. So that has been one of her main side gigs both on television and, and yes, as like a quote unquote celebrity poker player, but with real money for like 15 years, she's a socialite. Like she, I'm friends with her on Facebook and it is, it tires me watching her do all the stuff she does every single day of the week with costumes and, and and galas and stuff so so you add those two things in she's like made for the traders and and it also is helpful that people just think that she's the blonde girl from vegas and is a partier when really like she's going to be a silent assassin here um and so and you know we're we're seeing her pick up on um on that on that on, on dan's move towards phaedra uh which felt kind of kind of like a bad stupid move um and 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 risks kind of ruining the whole show quite frankly because poverty is already on the way out and Phaedra, hey. and phaedra was fine you know. <laughs> but now now the two the two people that have the two biggest suspicions on them are the traders and so us as viewers we want to we want to see at least we we kind of root for the bad guys sometimes and um to watch them both have to play with their backs up against the wall for who knows how long will be will, won't be as fun. I kind of like it when they're running the game, quite frankly. Yeah, well, that was last season. La last season, we got <laughs> that. Uh, Amanda, what do you think about Parvati and Sandra as the survivors on this season? 
I am loving their dynamic. I'm super curious to hear both of your all's takes on this. I think Sandra has absolutely clocked that Parv is a traitor and she is keeping her around for sort of, you know, also like the devil you know is better than the devil you don't. But also, I think she is absolutely at the very last minute, you know, if they make it to that point, going to say, okay, I know poverty is a, a you know, a traitor. Um, but do you think Sandra's clocked it and is just like keeping her safe or not like the, her name out of her mouth for her own purposes? I think so, because I feel like we've seen confessionals where she's saying that I can read Parvati better than anybody. And then it feels like the confessional cuts. So I feel like she knows. And I don't think they want us to know the, how well she knows. And I think you're 100 percent on the money. I think she's keeping Parv close, keeping that friendship close, because then Parv's not going to murder her. And moving forward, when they get to the very end to the final four, she can turn it on Parv and cut her because also Parv has been under a lot of eyes and scrutiny. So she's guaranteed to me if Parv gets to the four, there's no shot she doesn't get vote banished anyway. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of the perfect traitor to drag with you to the end there. The question is, can she? Because we still have quite a bit of cycles to go. And now Dan's gone. So who are they going to look at? Yeah, and, and Sandra does have that move from her survivor game where it's like, OK, she is like, OK, uh, pretending to be nice to Johnny Fairplay, but she's working to vote him out. She's gonna like, OK, Russell, I'll go with you to the end. OK, Russell, whatever you think. And then she's actually like working to undermine Russell. So I think that she can sort of like wear that disguise of like, okay, I am going to go along with your plan, but I'm actually working against you. Yeah. I, I think that there's also some, so much um, kind of, they think there's so much and there to a certain extent, there is some of their survivor reputations and legend status are at, are at play here. And they both want to get one over on the other one. And I think that Sandra is waiting to make her shot count. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I don't th see this as a, oh, we're working together because we were on Survivor. I see it as because of our background. This is going to be just one more argument why I'm a better competition show gamer than you are. Yeah. And they had that feud coming into this thing. Like, uh, Wes, th that uh, we hear like, oh, you know, that that's all in the past. But right, can that go away so quickly? No, I mean, and like bananas and I, for example, are uh, are are on incredibly friendly terms right now, but we've had 15 years of going at each other. And so it would be impossible for either one of us to not turn on the other one if we saw a very, very good reason and good time to do so. And they're not even on as good as terms as us. So I think it's like they're going to play nice. They're going to smile in each other's faces. But the reality of it is they're they're They want to take a shot. They just don't want it to miss. We have some questions from the listeners, um, and uh, we have some questions about CT. Luca had asked a question, uh, could CT be a good trader, uh, or is he the best at leading the faithfuls? Um, you know, to anyone that doesn't know CT, he's annoyingly good at just about everything, even in the situations where you don't think that he would be good at something, right? Because and, and one of the reasons why he's been so successful in the challenge is because people give him all the credit for being good at the big guy, strong guy stuff. But then what they forget that he's got more of an engineer brain than anybody. And so he'll, he'll, he'll beat you at puzzles and building things as well. He's also gotten particularly good at the social side. Um, and he's got this like goofy uh, side of him that like Phaedra is falling for is what it looks like, quite frankly. He's so silly. He's very, yeah. He's so like, yeah. silly. Yeah. But that, but that, I, do, I say exactly that, exactly that way too. So I feel, uh, I, I, I understand why Phaedra is doing that. And it's just, it's, uh, he's almost, he's just a bit, he's just a, a kid at heart. Um, then another thing that doesn't kind of get talked about is he's a trained actor and is in movies as lead roles. And it's like, he's on the precipice of kind of taking that next step. So you add in all of it and it's like, yeah, he could do the traitor side and he has no emotion whatsoever. Like he won't feel guilty about anything right now. He's just faking, uh, shepherding the faithfuls. He doesn't care. He's just, he just likes the free breakfast. Like, <laughs> and he'll do like, it, and, and so if, if the other, if, if what it was is to shepherd himself through from the, uh, the role of a traitor, he would do that and he would do it very well as well. He seems like somebody who is going to be, 
uh, in the end game, just because one Phaedra loves him so much uh, mm. and uh, that is like, will we'll never go with the plan to kill him. And then he's not going to get banished. So unless he totally puts his foot in his mouth, I feel like that he's going to be around for a while. He's really good at not putting his foot in his mouth because he he plays on the side of the spectrum that Dan is doing. But if Dan is a, a one as far as doing things, CT is more of like a two or a three. So he's going to get all the benefits of not saying too many names, not playing too hard, but he'll play hard enough to be not suspect. But here's an interesting little like way of looking at it. They all want to win the challenges. And they've gotten rid of some really strong, smart players thus far. And then there's some, and I'm not going to name names, but there's some less good players on the challenge side that are left. Soon enough, they're going to keep him around strictly to help him win the games. Like to this last one, he was one. He was anchoring, bringing that catapult up the mountain. Mm -hmm. If they kick him out, who's going to carry that thing the next day or whatever the game is? Um, and so I think that there's a, a lot of reasons to say that he's going to continue to do well. You know, I would love to know how you two both feel about these housewives. Now, is that a blind spot for you two or do you guys uh, ever check out the real housewives? We uh, it's massive blind spot for massive both of us, spot. but we really like Phaedra. We think that she's funny. Um, and yeah. then I know that she's not a housewife, but we like the, the case. MJ. Uh, below that. Oh. Yeah, uh, yeah. 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 We yeah. like we like her a lot. She and then and and now that they're like buddies, um, mm -hmm. like instant buddies is hilarious. Um, so but I re but thus far, I mean, we don't have as much data on the rest of them, but Phaedra has been a blast to watch. Yeah. That was I yeah, we knew nothing about uh Phaedra coming in and what a pleasant surprise. <laughs> what a pleasant surprise yeah. for us. And she's just killing it as a trader. So um, yeah, I've wanted to go back and watch clips of her just so I have a better idea of what There's some wild is. ones from what yeah, I understand. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's a bit of a blind spot for us too. But I, I would just love to hear, you know, it, it's so fascinating to hear how you talk about how the, you know, the challenge people play it like this and the survivor people play it like this and the big brother people play it like this. But then you have the wild card in these Bravo people coming in and there's going to be so many of them in any given season of The Traders. Yeah, well, they're not. They're gonna be. They're gonna struggle to play a clinically smooth, good game, which is good um, for my friends. Um, but it's but it's also good for the viewers because clinically good games turn into Dan, and um, and whereas bad games turn into messy, fun to view things. Um, but the great gamers will be able to take advantage of that. They, they'll they'll kind of play a little too sloppy, but their one liners are veteran status like um those aren't pre-written raps either those are that is how they talk um and it's incredibly entertaining it makes me want to watch the housewives i'm not going to <laughs> um but i but i i, I the temptation I, is there yeah i i can see i can see why they're they're big television stars for sure like if they were much more athletic and really good at puzzles they would be phenomenal on the challenges um but uh that there's just that it factor that uh, you can't train. It's almost like a. It's almost like a. There's an improv mu muscle in your brain, that uh, that has to be at a certain level uh, to do well on television. And they, and at least the ones they've brought on here, and Phaedra uh, specifically, it's, it's it's strong with her. Yeah, she has had some amazing lines in this last episode at the roundtable with Dan saying. Uh, you're saying I do too much because you do too little, and right now you're doing too much was incredible on the spot. My favorite one, though, was at the turret with Parv when she's like, yeah, I'm kind of dinged up. I'm coming out of the hospital, though. You're in the ICU. And I thought, how would you even think You're of that right up? That line. <laughs> yeah, so right. good. It, it was, was so good. And yeah, I love a good analogy. And that was not that was not like made up as she was waiting to go up in the turret. Like that came out. That, that That's perfect. A great example. Yeah. Yeah. Thank God Sheree got the shield last week because she was in so much danger. So right? I'm really glad that she was able to get that. I don't think she knows what's going on, but she's she's uh, she'll probably get to the end for that very reason. So we have the game players and then we have the Bravo people, but I guess there's like a little lane in between where we have like bachelor love Island uh, type people where we get, here comes bachelor Pete and he has been this big focal point of the last couple of weeks. And he turned the whole game on, on his head 
for the, I, what what's your reaction to to Pete and the idea of bachelor people in this uh, mix that we're putting together? The whole um, uh, well, I love the mix, right? Because like it, to, to say like an entire show doesn't have people that you could pull and put on other things is crazy. Like only Banana says something like, "Oh, no bachelors will ever be good on the challenge." Like he says things like that. I don't. It's like a large pool of people. There's people that would qualify for all the different shows. It looks like Pete has a um a a, a, a a good feel for this particular game um i think I, I i would imagine he's one of the people that did his homework and he watched the show um because coming up with the idea of setting that trap in the way that they did is something that they've done on other seasons and so a, a so a, someone like ct who had not seen anything before he went in would never have come up with that idea on his own that is a stolen idea um, and, but either way, it's a great idea. And the fact that it worked and worked so perfectly. And the fact that Dan was even warned that it could be happening. It's like Parvati, like said, this might be happening. Mm -hmm. We, all we have to do is go for, you know, pick from this other relatively Any of the people who were in the house, which was, <laughs> which was like, you know, five or six people to choose from, like pick one of them and kill that one. And he still, he still made that mistake. I would say that like right now he looks like a genius. But it was a risky move. And then once it paid off and there was some luck involved in some of that paying off, it's kind of like you'd have to be an idiot to not be able to take that and run with it. And he has. And so I give him props. But, um, you know, he had he had like once he made that move, he had pocket aces. And so you, you kind of don't give that much credit for someone that wins a hand with pocket aces. I'm very curious to see if he accepts the uh, the invite to become a trader. Yes, because... will he accept that rose? Yes, <laughs> I I feel like he has just gone down this path where he is just loving, you know, saying, "Oh, I'm faithful. I'm the most faithful of all the faithfuls." And yeah, I think he's a dead man walking if he you know declines this offer. But I could also see him declining it. And the viewers deserve it. We deserve <laughs> to watch him accept this offer is all I got, is all I got to <laughs> say. The rose. Yeah. yeah. I thought it was a weird spot for the show to do a cliffhanger where will he, will he accept it? Cause I feel like he would, he has to accept it. It feels like uh, that I thought you would probably want to put the cliffhanger on who are they going to ask? I feel like that that seems like the bigger question. I was surprised that they gave us that it was going to be Pete. And now the question is going to be, will he accept it? This is why I don't like watching things in an unbingeable format. <laughs> um, it's really annoying. And it was the only cliffhanger that I had to suffer through because I, now we get to have all this discourse this week, though. I, I mean, it's fun, right? I get it. But there's only one show that I watch regularly on a weekly basis, which is the challenge, because I do my weekly recap for the challenge. Mm -hmm. um, and television these days is meant to be binged. I'm sorry. Um, here we are as the victim of this, but I get it. Yeah, I th I think he's going to take it. Um, I think that the last sentence, I think that he was leading us down the path in that confessional that he wasn't. That last sentence before they cut was basically, I heard him kind of say I, that he was going to accept it. And it's almost like he can do more harm from inside the turret to them. Um, and, and it'd be good TV. I just don't know if he, I don't know if he thinks that way. Like, yeah, if I see a tie, in paths of like, oh, like, you know, six of one, half a dozen of another path A or path B, I choose the path that's better television. Um, <laughs> and so I would accept the rose personally. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No I, question. I love what you said about him having pocket aces, because to me, it did feel that way this episode. But then it also felt like you have pocket aces and instead of slow rolling the guy in front of you, you're max betting way too early and they might fold at any point by vocalizing that, hey, I'm a faithful. I'm going to die now. I'm going to get murdered. I'm going to get murdered. Because now, if you stop, if you're not getting murdered for like two cycles, it's kind of suspicious. And if he does accept, that's something he's going to have to worry about. And also, again, isolating the other group. I feel like he nailed the trap, but I also think it really made him feel like he's untouchable. And the yeah. reality is, if he says no to this invite, they have no reason to not murder him next, unless yeah. he has the shield, of course. And so... And and why and why didn't he okay fine he's got it narrowed down to three and then he got it narrowed down to two why tell both of them um you can only get rid of one person at a time it's already right. hard to get rid of one but to, in the way that he's saying i don't think it's ct and ct's believing him he should have picked like let's say poverty and said 
I don't think it's you either. It is definitely Dan. And then once we get rid of Dan, we've got a clean slate. When when he knows in the back of his head, oh, I'm coming for her next. But like you, you are on like on, on our show, it would be dumb to have more than one enemy at a time. Right. Um, it's it's also, by the way, dumb to not have an enemy because then no one knows where you stand. So like it's very smart to always have one person you're going after. And yeah, you get some heat from that one person, but everyone else feels safer because they know you're going, going after fill in the blank person. Let's bring in a question from Scott Chupak, who says, uh, should Parvati have chosen to recruit someone other than Peter with the plan being to frame Peter as the obvious trader that was recruited? I honestly, uh, I was surprised she went that route. Uh, I was really thinking they would go Kate. Um, you know, I'm like, oh, Kate is, you know, going to relish this and yeah. jump How right could you in. tell if she was even a trader? How would she be acting any different? Exactly. And, and exactly what I think Scott or the listener said was, um, you know, yeah, everyone's still going to think, well, it makes sense to bring in Peter. So it's obviously Peter. Um, so yeah, I'm curious to hear your all's take on that, but I was surprised that, that they went that route and especially knowing that there's a high likelihood that he, the highest of likelihoods of anyone else in the house or the castle that he declines that offer over others. Yeah. My take on it was she could either obviously murder him or murder an ally of his and then still come back the next day. And everyone's looking at her because Peter got on, like stepped on the round table and said, I'm voting Parv because I know y'all are voted out Dan already. And this is, I want you to remember that when I die, this is the person. So it was kind of a losing battle there. In my head, Parvati knows that she's in a tough spot. And this is kind of the, let me throw some chaos into the mix. Maybe he'll work with me, which he seems like he's a big team player. So maybe now that he's switched jerseys, he's going to work with them, uh, with uh, her more. But also it is a double-edged sword because he could just vote her out here and then recruit one of his own, and then keep his little group together, and then fly to the end and be in a good spot. Um, but I also think ultimately she's like, if I die, if I go, and and if this guy really you know pushes for me, I want him to become the villain. I want him to have to stab his friends. I want him to be a traitor because I'm petty like that, and I'm living for it. I'm very happy oh, about that. Do um, you think that they should have murdered over recruited? I think once the the hit missed on Bergy Bergy Bergalicious. You, you're yeah. just skipping two murders yeah. and you're oh, leaving the banishments open. <laughs> yeah. Well, that Hold on. Is, is this copyright infringement? Were you the first Burgalicious? Well, if his name is actually Bergy, is, which I don't know if that is or not, that's a <laughs> really interesting name. Then uh, then I guess I'm the one infringing. But I, I, Bergy is one of my nicknames. Uh, and Burgalicious around this house. You know, he gets called that on a daily basis. I'm treated like a piece of meat around this house, um, <laughs> just a sexual object, um, and that's that's one of my one of one of her love names for me. Mm -hmm. um, but it but it is really bad and horrible to watch my friends calling him Bergy. Um, it hurts my feelings, especially when oh. it's such an affectionate thing. They like him a lot, so it's like not my Bergalicious. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's very suspicious. That you yeah. Say that. yeah. Um, this is a really good question from Chris, Chris Hickey, who says, Wes, uh, would you employ a similar strategy here as you do on the challenge, such as befriending the less experienced players? Why or why not? Um, you know, I, okay. So I've tried every version of everything. And so there are a handful of seasons where I've gone and created alliances with the kind of rookies. But that's only because I was at odds or wanted to go against people that were in the best kind of popular spots. Mm -hmm. um, and then vice versa, where I will work with just the popular people because all the new people are coming after all the threats. And so I've done both. In this situation, though, I and it's one of the things that I love about this particular show, who are the quote unquote less experienced players because they've all they're, they're all threats like look you underestimate even a housewife and she just murdered somebody um she murdered a legend of big brother because she was un underestimated not a single person on this cast should be underestimated no one is kind of inexperienced and in, from from this standpoint um they're all social alphas and um you know anyone who underestimates them and and so therefore who i partner with would be would in fact be pretty challenging to pick and yeah. choose how, how you do that for sure but Last season, when you say like Sari, 
really use that strategy very effectively. Yeah, that's very different though. Like, because then you've got true, true veterans right. versus true, true, absolute rookies. Yeah, that, that's very much like a challenge atmosphere last they season. Were fan, they were fans too. They not only had never played a competition show before, never been on a television show at all before, but or maybe knew, seen a competition show before. <laughs> I mean, it was it was uh, uh, it was set up for them to get mutilated, and that they did. But in this, like who, who like who are the are are those people? So I think it's a good question. Um, but uh, it's I I don't think that I could, and if, even if I could, I I I don't think that I necessarily would. Mm -hmm. We haven't really touched on this yet, but is the trader something that you would be willing to uh, go do? I know in your last challenge timeout, you said you basically had a, uh, you know, a, a official unofficial retirement from the challenge. Are, would you leave the door open for a traders? OK, so I was tagged hundreds of times when the season one came out as like, oh, you should put this guy. And I got annoyed by it. And I've made a public statement where I was like, I'm never going to go on this show. I'm on, I'm a challenger for life. And it was a, it was an over the top West thing to say. And I didn't really even understand what it was. And now that I've seen it, I'm a, I'm a big fan. I take those statements back and I would go on the traders. Now, for the record, it's like just, you know, it just needs, it's almost easier to just say this. And so we can all move on. I was asked to be on the next season. Um, I will not be able to do it because of prior engagements um, for my business, for my, for my business. It's kind of pre-booked during the time that they will be filming. I will not be able to do it though. And, the, and my retirement from the challenge um, is more along the lines of like, my company has to uh, book things more in advance than they than they basically cast for shows, including apparently the traders. So, but also even worse for the challenge because not only do they do things on the same timeline, which is like a month and a half or so out, which is not enough time for me. But the challenge can be up to like three months, so it's even harder to kind of work mm -hmm. the route. So there's a higher likelihood that I'll be able to make the traders happen in some point in the future because it's more of like a three week commitment, easier yeah. to book things around, but I will not be on the next one. Um, I would love to go. I would be incredibly good at it. Um, yeah. He's holding yeah. out till you go, Rob. He wants okay. to be in compliance with you. All so. right. Well, 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 we can work something out. I'm sure. Uh, <laughs> Amanda, what about for you? Like, what about like a, a Marcus and Larsa situation? Would you go with Wes? You know, I, I, season one with the mix of, you know, normies and celebs, I was not a fan of that at all. I hope that they don't do it again. I hope they either do, you know, what some of the international seasons have done with, with all brand new to, on TV people or all celebrities like this season. So um, I don't think I'd want to put myself in a situation where half the people were like the Wes's of the world and half the people were like me. But if they cast a season that was all normal people, hit me up. And she would be very good. She's at her her uh, her day job. She's a recruiter. And so, mm -hmm. I mean, what it, what do you do on the traders or really any competition show is you recruit. Um, and so she would be very good. But what I told them when they cast is I was like, I actually prefer to do the international seasons. Um, and so wow, he wants to pull a Sandra and go on, you know, Australian Survivor, wanna, where no one knows, you know, no one knows them somewhere, somewhere else. Yeah, I want to go on Australian Survivor. Is what it, is what it boils down. Australian traders. traders, yeah. Well, yeah, traders. Well, Australian Survivor. Uh, I, I'm sure they would He's take you too. A whole year. Yeah, but that would be a bigger commitment. It's like 50 yeah. days. So. Yeah. Yeah, that's what are you going to do? Right. Yeah, no, sorry. I would want to do the Australian <laughs> traders. But no, if when the time comes, I would love to do the traders. Um, I'm just going to be a fan for now. I will not. And so to anyone that's a supporter of mine, you can stop right. tagging me. I cannot be on the next one. <laughs> and, and you're not going to bring a guitar like Johnny Bananas. No, but I never do. Like, and 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 Bananas was like, oh, well, I did really well on USA 3 or 2 or whatever we, we were just yeah. on. And I'm like, no, you didn't. You got picked on through and into and, and the only reason the, the, to be able to switch teams the way you did, it kind of turned the tables. But you were everyone's most hated guy for the first two-ish weeks. 
And yeah. so a weird rule that was made basically just for you kind of saved you. And so I was like, this is going to keep happening to you. You got to just show up like a normal person. This is a man that like, I remember back in the day before we had made as much money as we had, I offered him a thousand dollars if he could not say a word from uh, uh, on the bus ride home. And there was, we were safe. I think he'd even just won. So we're, and, and I wasn't saying that to like, so he wouldn't talk game. I was saying it because I was like, could you in an hour and a half, just shut the fuck up. <laughs> and he wouldn't even take the bet. Like he knows he would lose. And so all he's got to do on these shows is let his personality out a little bit but he's got to reel it back in a little bit and just act like a normal human. Like a conversation is between two people listen and then respond and ask questions. And he's too much of a showman and a narcissist and um, an ego maniacal maniac um, about yeah. attention. So it's, it'd be very hard for him, but he needs to do it. Wes, I got to know real quick. You said he can play four songs on the guitar. Is, is Wonderwall one of them? It is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, okay, so there's even a scene where he's playing Wonderwall on House of Villains, and the producers come on over the loudspeaker and be like, Banana, stop playing Wonderwall, learn a new song. <laughs> and so they even wrote that into the, but yes, it's one of the, it's one of the songs. All right, let me ask you a question, though. Have you followed the whole saga on social media where Johnny Bananas is talking about Dan all the time? Yeah, he, um is bitter um because i mean it's essentially all dan's doing and then watching it confirmed it it's not like phaedra really was much of that poverty wasn't in the discussion wasn't in the turret yet um and so i think he was rightfully excited to be on traders and wanted a shot and and it's so different than what we're used to where we at the very least would have he would have gone into an elimination battle and kind of got to do something but just like the the gaslighting of opening up an envelope and getting put on an airplane um you know three weeks earlier than you're used to when you know when it, it was too much for his ego to handle and he's very bitter um is what it boils down to and i'd love to like break it down that it's anything more than that or it's deeper but yeah no he's bitter and in the same way that like sometimes when people cross me in really kind of silly unnecessary ways i'm bitter towards that person as well and i tried i'm probably better at it than at hiding it than he is but he's yeah. bitter um and and let's but let's let's talk shit on dan for just a second why would you get rid of the most obnoxious guy in in the house like you keep him around because he's chaos personified mm -hmm. he would have thrown out so many incorrect faithful or, or traitor assumptions that he would have been targeted all on his own or and created suspicion in so many random people um that was the, that's the guy that you actually keep um around so i yeah. think that in, in my opinion like uh dan probably chose there there is some and we see this in a lot of big brother players so I, i'm sorry if i insult dan here but too many big brother players have done this in the past and survivor players and challengers they get really jealous of the people that have been on a bunch of shows, won a bunch of money, have a big brand, have large followings, all the reasons why they continually go on big shows. He and, and other people like him have that, and he becomes an immediate target. And I think that Dan probably looked at Bananas through that lens a little bit, like he was going to steal the show and he's had enough chances and all that kind of stuff. Not like he's some big threat, because if you know anything about Bananas, he's just going to play Wonderwall until he gets voted out on his own. <laughs> so like go after somebody else. Um, and so I think that Bananas is bitter, but I also think yeah. that Dan made the wrong move. And I get that he's salty about the whole thing, but this is my galaxy brain kind of take on it because I kind of feel like that, you know, you mentioned earlier, we talked about that the challenge, you stab in the front and you play these games with uh, people over and over again. And so it doesn't really make sense for somebody to do something to you here. They're going to have to pay for what they did down the road. But if there's, if Johnny Bananas, he does so many shows, like, does he want to signal like, hey, it's not worth it to F with me because I will be a nightmare for you. <laughs> Do not cross me. Do not F with me. Yeah. Yeah, I think he's, I, 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 I do the same thing. Like I've only got two, three people that have really come after me in recent years and I will, I will crush them in professional ways. Um, 
online uh, as in like don't now if you come at me in very fair ways and everything's cool but if you cross the line um i like there's gonna be bigger ramifications than just this game um and 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 it's not necessarily cool or mature but uh yeah it's there's some truth to that because i mean look at us now we, uh, a lot of us challenge fans we hate dan right now um <laughs> and so but i also kind of love it because a lot of challenge fans loved i mean i personally love watching bananas lose right away um, i think it's, <laughs> i think it's hilarious um i if i was a trader i would have a hard time i wouldn't do that by the way just because but i would have a hard time not doing it because that is just comedic gold but he did not do it as comedic gold the comedy was not one percent of his rationale but if that was his rationale i would applaud him i'd send him a, a an emmy like i like this is but it wasn't it wasn't that i think it was a bad read on how bananas would have done in the game and uh it was an un, it was a missed use of a of a big kind of power. Have you two had any good traders uh, conversations between the two of you that would be fun to talk about here? I feel like we actually haven't because I've been watching them week by week, and Wes just binged it. And we're also like newborn parents who watch, you know, like five minutes and then our sweet angel baby starts screaming in the mm -hmm. background and I go into the other room with her. And so, no, we haven't. And we didn't want to talk too much before we jumped on this, too, because we're You're like, pros. yeah, we're mm -hmm. like, we need to have it all come out on, on you know, RHAP. Yeah, we're a little bit. The last four months have been like Clark Kent and Superman. Like we, we we're not in the same room at the same time um we're like one mm -hmm. of us has to be working on our job while the other one is working on the baby and then we switch um because it's it's uh un, you know we can't both be working on our jobs or both be relaxing and and then it would be silly for us both to be playing with the baby at the same time yeah but, well i'm so happy that this podcast got to be like a uh, date night it's this is our this is our <laughs> and so this yeah, is definitely we, we should have date. poured some wine and you know we could have trusted each other to drink out of the chalice without mm -hmm. poisons and, but yeah. and, well and and you know as much as i love going on dates with my wife where she gets into costume um this will have to suffice for the week. <laughs> <laughs> um we have a question from eric meyer it says hey west big fan uh what can the challenge production learn from uh the success of the traders to make it a better show Ooh, that's a good question and you know i'm not gonna step on the toe on their toes too much right to, um in the sense of the challenge is one of if not the greatest competition show that has ever been invented it was the inventor of the genre i mean i know that i shouldn't be saying that on a survivor origin but the challenge came before survivor um, and we have been, and obviously survivors innovated a lot of things, but at the end of the day, the entire genre was, was created by Buna Murray Productions. And so it is so corporate now though, in the sense of like their job is to, is to keep doing the thing that the fans love so much and to do it and to do it well. And that takes a lot of resources. But one thing that has really kind of grinded my gears over the years is that they haven't experimented with too many, if not any, things that are very, very different than the challenge itself and utilize the momentum of the characters that they've created. Um, so, for example, I've always thought that I, I would love to watch a two-episode spinoff where the best finalists do a two-day final in, like, Montana. And so we find... And so it, it would cost you know, 10% as much of a normal show, you'd get 20% of, of total of episodes. So the ROI would be there. And it would just meant to like break up the, the content a little bit and just change it up just a little bit. It's like not everything has to be three months in a prison where we're hanging out yeah. helicopters. <laughs> um, and like, they're the reasons why some of us have our, the followings that we have and the momentum. And so like utilize that. And so right now, actually there, what's airing on YouTube they're doing a deep dive in the challengers hometowns and it's doing really well. Um, they probably spent, they probably sent a two or three person uh, crew to Boston to film CT for three mm -hmm. days. They did the same thing with Cara and Amanda. It's doing incredibly well. The ROI on that is going to be great. They're going to build their brand. Um, and so like what, and, and so I applaud them for things like that. So I almost wonder whether or not like what something that I said to someone on the phone was, I was like, why didn't the challenge create traders or something like it 10 years ago. And so there, it really is kind of 
sucks that like our only option is this two and three month investment um, when there could be something that's dramatically shorter. Um, you know, even they did some spinoffs that did really well uh, called Champs versus Pros and, and yeah. Champs versus Stars. And, and by the third one, by the way, I was there for six weeks. But the first one was two weeks and we got some really big people in that because of the level of commitment and they just had to change some things around. And so I don't know. I think that uh, I think that experimenting with some shorter shows with very different voting dynamics would be a, a good thing for them. Puya, what else for Wes and Amanda? Well, I know earlier Wes had said. I have like I can think of 10 plus people who could be good from the challenge on the traders. Now I don't want to put you on the spot, but can you give us like three names of people? Because you said you're not going to be on for the foreseeable future. Who are yeah. you saying should be the ones to make it there? Devin Walker um is definitely a big one. He's the reigning um challenge champion. He won uh rider dies. He would be incredibly good at mm -hmm. this. Um then I think that uh, um, we talked about John A at one point. Um, she's very under the radar, like sneaky good at politics. Um, she'd be, I think, more of like a CT type game where like everyone likes her, everyone wants her around, no one suspects her. She could be good as a trader or a faithful. Nehemiah Clark from my original season would be really good. He's an uh, he's he was one of the main characters on the three seasons of All Stars, um, and he he has a personality that's very different than the rest of the challengers. Way less kind of aggressive, um, and very likable. And so I think that there's I think that there's some arguments for Nehemiah too. So those would be the, but yeah the John and Michelle Fitzgerald. Is she survivor? Is she a uh, challenge now? We don't know, but she would bring the vibes. She yeah. would bring the outfits. She would bring <laughs> she would. the chaos, the Michelle yeah. sounds. You know, we need we need Mish on there. Yeah. Uh, yeah, she's got a lot of good survivor yeah. stuff. But Amanda, I was going to ask you, then, uh, then who are the survivors that should go? Ooh, that is, you know, Sir oh, oh, I got one. Christian Ubicki. We do yes, love Christian yes. Hubicki. Christian Hubicki is my personal favorite. We love Christian Hubicki. I thought about yeah. asking you guys if you could bring him on to wait for this particular episode, but I didn't want to ask. We him. could do that as another podcast. We yes. could. We Make could. Yeah. 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 I think uh, Dominic Abate would be great. Yeah. Um, really fun. I mean, Boston Rob was like rumored to be on this season and then mm -hmm. wasn't. And I feel like he'd be fun. And Rob, I'm I'm not just sucking up to you, but like I think you would be great at traders as well. So I don't know if I'd be great at it. Uh, would be great. I would for us. It'd be very I fun. Think that you would consider it at some point because I think you'd be a lot of fun to watch. I, I don't think that the me considering it is the obstacle <laughs> here. <laughs> I don't know about that, but yeah, we would. Yeah. We're big Christian Hubicki fans, so if anyone takes any, he would be very fun because you could sort of imagine him with like the whiteboard of like, okay, I've triangulated where the pocket of traders <laughs> must be. Yeah, absolutely. Ex yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Tyson, no, no, go ahead, Tyson West. would be great. Tyson would be very. Ooh, good. Yes. I know that you've made some comparisons between West and Tyson in the past. I mm. would love to see Tyson on Traders. He would bring so many funny yeah. moments. I think. Yeah. Well, think West, so. what do you think of that comparison? I think that it's fair. I mean, there's. Um, I think and that Tyson is a good friend of mine. Okay. Yeah. No, I think that so it's. So be a, careful. Yeah. No. <laughs> no, I, no. I don't mean. To, I, I didn't yeah. mean that. I, I didn't mean, mean it. I meant, it to, I meant it as a compliment. Yeah. Yes. I. Uh, I. I. I see that. He. <laughs> he is the Wes of the of Survivor, mm -hmm. um, and he, he's very smart. He's also a swimmer, um, and you know he he kind of. He's very he's sarcastic. A, very sarcastic, kind of like a dark sense of humor. Um, yes. Um, and he, he is like a, the likable villain, but not actually doing anything bad type thing. Like, mm -hmm. um, you would never even classify him as a villain in real life, but when you I see mean, that person. I mean, he was on the villain's tribe, but you know. <laughs> was he? Yeah. That was Sandra and Poverty. Well, what exactly. I mean, like in, in real life, you wouldn't classify, you wouldn't no. be like, well, oh, that's a bad guy. But on a game show, you're like, okay, yeah, you're on the villain squad. Like I would never be on a hero squad. I would be on a villain squad, but I don't do anything bad to anyone. He's a villain. Like he eats the coconuts when nobody's looking. Right. Yes. Yeah. I it, feel like Tyson would go in and like innovate some strategy, sort of like bachelor Pete did, which who saw that coming, but 
you know, Tyson would go in there and be like, oh, I'm injured. Like, you know, I can't help with the challenges, but I can help with this thing mm -hmm. or whatever. So I feel like there'd be some things that he brought in that were different that we'd never seen on it before. Yeah. Um, yeah, I certainly could imagine something like that in terms of like, all right, tonight, everybody here, we're all voting for this. And if anybody breaks this, then, then we know that they're like trying to screw, uh, screw with us. So I, I he, definitely could see something He's not like going to sit back in the cut and neither no. would I, and neither would I. And like, I, I think that the, the, when we, when you cast any show, so this isn't just like, like tr traitor casting ideas here, you should never cast someone that you know, for a fact is going to sit in the cut. Like like go play and play hard. And I would say the mm -hmm. same thing with the challenge, like just because it's good gameplay to not say anybody's name and to hide in your bunk bed, doesn't mean that you deserve to be on the challenge. And so I don't want to see someone not say any names on traders. I want to see you kind of play and play hard. I want to see you create an alliance or two. I want you to, I want you to take a shot. Even if you miss like play and play hard, because this is a television show. It's not the Olympics. Yeah. Can we talk uh, real quick about, Wes, I was doing a little bit of a deep dive into what you're up to to get ready for this. And I saw that you have your own reality show. Yeah, it's like uh, it's actually one of the largest business shows on the Internet. So it's a it's a competition show for startup entrepreneurs. I own one of the largest business incubators on the planet. We invest in early stage companies and small businesses, and we help take them to the next level through a multi year mentorship program. Um, and we over COVID, I uh, experimented with like a filmed version of that where we do it over like a weekend in a house and then that worked really well. So we kind of grew it and then it turned into a week in a house and then we outgrew the house and it turned into two mansions and then we outgrew the two mansions, turned into a hotel. We outgrew the hotel and now we're in a casino. Um, but so about a hundred startups from across the country come in and they basically watch a startup class and then play games. Um, it's available on our app on Facebook and on um, and Prime Video on Amazon. Um, and it, uh, but yeah, I, it was my idea. I created the production company that films it. Um, I write all the classes, I perform the classes, I'm the host. So it's like a, um, it's kind of, it's created a, it's, it's like a little cult classic amongst, um, startup people. Yeah. Can, can I ask, then what's your pedigree with this, uh, that have you, uh, did you, uh, have a startup that you, uh, took, uh, in, into, uh, a, a big business? So I, because when I was young, um, I came into what I thought was a lot of money early because of uh, television stuff, but it's not a lot of money. It just was a lot of money for like a 19 year old to have. Yeah. And so I did what 19 year olds with quote unquote, a lot of money and it's not a lot of money. I invested the money I bought into things as an investor. And I found myself putting those investments in the same room as each other because they would share ideas and mentorship and um, they would get discounts on legal fees because they would yeah. buy them together and things like that. And so my dissertation to graduate from college was uh, basically a modern business incubator that brings in startup companies cohort style. And that's what I did. It was before the world used the word accelerator. So I was still using the word incubator. And for any nerd out there, um, those, those are two completely different things. Um, and then, and so I, I launched it and it, uh, um, and let's see, so we do somewhere in the neighborhood of like a combined hundred plus million dollars in annual sales, um, and have been at that level now for probably three or so years with the hope that we get to a billion in annual sales from our clients in the next couple of years. That's my goal. Well, and Amanda, Amanda, look at this guy. I know. Well, yeah. and you know, I think it's really neat when you talk to the people who've gone through or been part of what he's built is. Um, a similar thing to the RHAP community. Like it's that community piece that they take away from it of like, I love this thing. I love talking business. I love, you know, building something, but like, I don't have a lot of people in my daily life who do that. And I think the same thing with like RHAP, like, I mean, that's how I found you all is like, I love Survivor. I don't have a lot of people that I interact on a daily basis with somehow that watch the show. And so mm -hmm. like hearing from other people in a community who love the same thing, you don't feel isolated or like a weirdo or, you know, and then you also like these people who are part of, you know, the blocks and part of everything Wes has built. They mail, they make lifelong friends out of it. They travel together. They, you know, get their families together. And I think that's what's 
one of the things that's really special about it is just how it changes people's lives outside of like their success within the business. Yeah. And you got all this going on. People are like, but why won't you come back to the challenge? <laughs> that so everyone kind of um they so the the challengers refuse to digest anything that we just said. Um, because they either don't believe it or their egos won't allow them to believe it because they're like, Oh, you're rich, rich. Um, and they 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 think it's like a lie or they can't understand it. And if you ask any of like people that I've been on the last several seasons of the challenge, like yeah. to give them an elevator pitch of what I do, they would not be able to do it and they would suck at it because they can't, um, they can't. So when they hear me retire because of my business has taken off to such a degree that it's just, it's also as exciting as a once in a lifetime opportunity that is the challenge. Um, they don't get it and they think, oh, that's why they, or they, that's why so few of them believed the retirement talks. Um, but it's like, you know, I'd have to win the challenge four times a year yeah, yeah. to move the needle. And then when I say things like that, they just dislike me even more, but it's like, no one's believing me. <laughs> and so it's like, what do you want me to do? I'm in, I'm in a, a trader's castle right now. Um, mm -hmm. like, what do you want? What do you, what do you want from me? Like, um, and so, and then, and then some of them are like, oh, well, you're doing it because of the baby. And it's like, oh yeah, well, yes, the baby is making everything more challenging from a scheduling angle, but it's not the re many of people have gone and done things like the challenge and survivor as parents. It's just my business commitments are very, yeah, um, are very big because I'm not just on the blocks and show up in the, in the weeks prior. My app, my name is on the credit card that buys out the entire casino. Um, and we obviously to do such a thing have to do so in a very uh, months and months and months ahead of time. So when the you know traders calls or the challenge calls and they're like, do you have this window? I'm like, no, I've already spent a half a million dollars on that week. Um, and so uh, let alone whatever's to come. And so it's like that's my big problem is that is I've just scheduling. is scheduling. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's incredible. I, I sincerely mean it. I'm going to watch the whole show. I can't wait to see it. So uh, thank you for sharing here's all that. My, with us. Here's my last sales pitch on watching it. It yeah. is going to be the most boring show you've seen ever. <laughs> unless, that's the sales pitch. Unless, unless you're an entrepreneur, at which point yeah. it's going to be the most entertaining piece of entrepreneurial education you've ever watched in your entire life. So for those, So if you're watching it to be entertained strictly, you'll hate it. But if you're an entrepreneur and have built your own business or are in the, pro and especially the early stages of so, you're going to be like, oh my God, why wasn't, why didn't my professors do this in college? Why did, why aren't they teaching it this way in books? Why aren't they? And, and so I'm taking like just a really standard, good entrepreneurship curriculum and then sprinkling reality television, story making principles and reality television game show um, kind of ideals and using that to reinforce what we're teaching. So um, yeah. I would say if you're an entrepreneur, you it's almost should be mandatory watching. If not, uh, honestly, you should. Skip. But it's almost like the like the connector between your two worlds of like what better way to showcase what you're doing on a business than to take the thing that you have like the most fame around uh, a reality TV show and then like, you know, connect that to this other business that you've built. Yeah, uh, I couldn't have said it better myself. Yeah, and I did in, epi in episode one of season one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Well, Weston, man, thank you for making so much time to talk with us. Uh, this has been so fun. I, I hope we could do it again sometime. We would love to sign up as regular recurring guests. Um, so whenever you guys are doing what you know, whatever's next, Survivor, so. whatever, whatever you want to talk about. We, uh, we know, yeah, we would love to be able to help out and we'll come, we won't come in costume next time. Um, yeah, we love what you do and, um, yeah, we're, uh, we're all in whenever you'll have us. Awesome. Um, what else should people check out from Wes and Amanda? Hmm. Mm, not much. Yeah. We already, uh, we, yeah, we're already at the top of the hill. Um, yeah. like it is <laughs> what it is. <laughs> Um, which is, uh, yeah. So I guess <laughs> tune into traders Four. <laughs> <laughs> Trader season four. All right, Puya, what's coming up for you? Uh, well, after this, I've got a 90 day fiance pod coming through the hot mess express is going hot. So we'll be talking about that. And also you can find me on Twitch, Twitch.tv slash Puya. That's where I am when I'm not podcasting and Twitter at Puyaism for any of my musings. 
Okay. Uh, we interviewed Dan Giesling on Friday. You could check that out uh, in our podcast feed. Rob is a website.com slash subscribe. We'll be back again live after this week's traders at 10 15 p.m. Eastern time. And the Survivor cast just dropped today, and we've got previews and interviews with all of the new Survivor 46 contestants. That's going to be uh, coming out starting two a day uh, on Tuesday for the next nine days. So make sure you're subscribed to all of that. Thank you so much for joining us for this uh, great catch up with Wes and Amanda. Take care, everybody. Have a good one. Bye. Bye.